I have recently walked the Camino de Santiago, the 800 kilometer pilgrimage walk across the north of Spain. And while we say things like, you know, it's about the journey, not the destination, there is a destination to get to the, the city of Santiago de Compostela at the end. And so the highlight or the climax of the Camino, even for non-religious people, is to go to Mass in the Cathedral of Santiago, where the bones or the remains of St. James the Apostle are buried. And you may have seen footage of the church and the, the Mass there, where they have this enormous boat of Fumero, this incredibly large incenser, which swings from the roof dozens of metres up into the ceiling and across the, the whole sweep of the church. It's an incredible sight. So knowing I need to get there early, I arrived about 90 minutes early to get myself a good seat relatively close to the front and a whole one for my friend Josh who was going to arrive a little bit later. About half an hour before Mass begins, the church starts filling up and I'm sort of trying my best to hold this space for two of us until Josh arrives and slips in. And by the time Mass is about to begin, the cathedral is packed. Every pew is full. People are standing all the way around the walls of the cathedral. And about two minutes before Mass begins, this older man kind of walks his way to the very front of the cathedral and begins agitating to the people in the rows in front of us to try asking them to move over so he can fit in. And there's just no chance. Everyone is shoulder to shoulder in these pews. He's not going to fit in. And he's starting to get a bit agitated, a bit upset, and he kind of comes back towards our seat and you can see the ushers are coming over. It's about to become a scene. When my friend Josh just stands up in his seat and says, would you like my seat? And he gets up and Josh just walks over to, over to over stand near the wall. And so this man kind of squeezes into the seat next to me, the seat that I've spent 90 minutes holding for Josh and I. And people behind me begin grumbling about it, and the person next to me begins grumbling about it, I begin grumbling on the inside. And I realize I'm going to spend the whole of Mass annoyed at this guy. So I got up too and got out of the seat because it was getting by now very, very squeezy and walked over and sat with Josh uh, against, the, against the far wall. And I realized actually that was actually a far more authentic pilgrim thing to do. Not to sit on these newly polished pews, which have obviously only been there in a few years, but to sit on the very floor where pilgrims have sat for, for 900 years in this cathedral, with my back pressed against the, against the worn sandstone walls. It felt somehow very authentically a, a, a pilgrim thing to do. I leaned over and asked Josh, Josh, why did you give your seat to this guy? And he just said, in all honesty, he said, uh, it just seemed like he needed it more than I did. It seemed like it mattered more to him. And I think in that moment, that was absolutely true. And I was just kind of stunned, and I realized something very important in that moment, that I am a bit of an organizer. I make plans. I plan ahead. I get ready for things. I do things like arrive 90 minutes early to places to get a good seat. And I hold on, I cling to those plans, and I get worried when those plans are threatened, and I get upset when those plans change. Josh, on the other hand, is so in the moment, he is so completely present and so, I guess, free, he's able to just do whatever the right and best thing is in that moment. And in that moment, he was able to do the most Christ-like thing. He was not attached to that seat. I was very attached, but he was not. He was completely free to say, what would Jesus do? and did that very thing. And that made me realize something about the gospel we read today, where Jesus meets the rich young man, who is kind of the opposite of my friend Josh, because this rich young man is attached. He is attached to his wealth. And, we can, and, and that holds him back from following Jesus. You know, Jesus says, you know, keep the commandments, do all the basic things, but then if you're really serious about following me, sell everything you own, give it away to the poor, and then come follow me. And we hear this rich young man walks away sad because he was a man of great wealth. And so we can understand this gospel in a couple of different ways. And we can make it about money. And true, Jesus speaks often about money as being the thing which we are, we are held back by. That when we are rich or we aspire to be rich, we cling to our wealth, we cling to our security. And that holds us back from Jesus in a way that people who are poor and are free and have less to lose flock to Jesus and much more able to go to him. So it is definitely about money, but it can be about other things too, because there are other things we might cling to, things we might be attached to other than money. We hear this man was a man of great wealth. That's what he was attached to. But we might be attached to other things. We might be attached to our own success, our own reputation, our own personality. We might be attached to our relationships, our friendships. We might be attached to uh, to our opportunities, we might be attached to even something as simple as, as that seat in the church. You might sit in the same seat every week at Mass and be annoyed if someone sits there first. That was my experience in the cathedral there in Santiago. 
there are lots of different things we might be attached to. And that might seem like big things. You might say, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm not attached to money. I'm not attached to this or that, but I just need this one thing. St. John of the Cross said that a bird can be, because St. John of the Cross is very much about we need to be detached from all things in order to cling to Christ. He said that a bird can be, can be attached to the ground by a thick, heavy chain or a small, slender thread, and yet it still can't fly. With this point being that even small things, if we attach to them, if we cling to them, they hold us back. They make us unfree. So how do we know what we're attached to? Well, we're attached to the thing which we are upset about losing or fearful of losing. That's the measure. You know, I think for older people, it may well be our independence and security. We, a lot of people fear that, fear losing a driver's license, fear being able to live in our own home. And these are legitimately good things to have. Independence, security, license, car, these are good things. But for older people, but, but if we are attached to them, if we, you know, if we think that my life is nothing without them, then we are attached in a way which is actually unhealthy. For younger people, it may well be our opportunities for the future, our opportunities to travel, our opportunities to study, the opportunity to work and have a social life. These are all, again, legitimately good things, but when we are attached to them, they can hold us back. We might make our plans, or in fact, God may have something other in store for us. We need to be free to say yes to. And this is important then to recognize a distinction between Christian spirituality and Eastern spirituality. You know, as you think of Zen Buddhism. That in, in Buddhism, which is very attractive to many people, there's a sense of detachment. A detachment is a very strong theme in Buddhism. But the detachment is detachment in and of itself. It is to be, it is to be attached to nothing, it is to be completely free, but it's freedom that has no, no other end point. In Christian spirituality, the freedom is freedom for something, is freedom to be able to follow Jesus. Remember, for the rich young man in the gospel, Jesus asked him to sell his wealth so he's free to then come follow him. For us, following Jesus, doing whatever Jesus may call us to, is the ultimate good. So we don't want to be free from constraints and free from things. We need to be free for, free to. We need to be free to love, free to serve, free to respond to God's call, whatever God's call may be in our lives. For my friend Josh, who's a great young guy, he was able to be free from, free from uh, the position and the great seat we had in the cathedral to watch this great event of this mass and this incredible incense thing swinging, to be able to do an act of kindness to someone who he just thought needed it more than he did. I hope that man, who will never know Josh's name, really uh, enjoyed that seat and got the most out of mass. I hope he was filled with gratitude for this young man who was able to give him his seat so he could enjoy a mass. I am filled with gratitude for Josh for the example he was to me in that moment. It reminds me to always strive to look and say, am I attached to anything? Am I clinging too tightly? Is there anything I need to let go of in order to be more free to follow Jesus and say yes to him?